Good evening. I want to talk to you tonight about the mineral water manufacturing business that was in Swinton and a bottling plant, uh, mostly known as Ward and Sons. Uh, I'm on the site of Build Base, um, the, the factory occupied the end of Market Street uh, and we can actually see there are some of the buildings still remaining here. Um, the grey building there was, was part of the site. Um, most of it's been demolished. Uh, it's now being used as a gymnasium and, uh, and for some other purposes. The, 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 the bottling site occupied around two acres here. Uh, it's now the build base yard. But if we can just look over here at Market Street and see the brickwork, uh, Market Street is now truncated somewhat. Uh, from from where the where the factory is, but we'll be able to we'll be able to address that with some with some photos uh, from from the time. Now the the mineral water uh, production started in Swinton round about 1870. Uh, there was two gentlemen called a Mr. Jackson and a Mr. Derwent, appropriately enough, and they um, they they formed a company and and they called it. The Bala Bala Water Company, rather a, rather a strange name. Uh, in 1874, then we get the first appearance of a member of the Ward family, when William Ward uh, began mineral water his mineral water works uh, up here on, on on Market Street. Around about 1900, the Bala Company merged with uh, with with Ward, which came, then became Ward and Sons later on. Uh, they won significant contracts uh, with the brewing industry to sort of bottled, uh, bottled products from the brewing industry, uh, in particular Bass Brewery, Worthington's Brewery, uh, and in 1935 they, they got the achievement of being the, the first bottlers of Bass and Worthington's Bright beers. Uh, they're not only the, the, they also were the wholesalers for many other types of beers from other companies, beers and, and lagers. And the equipment that they had was, was for bottling, for conditioning, for filtering, uh, uh, filling the bottles obviously and labelling. Uh, and the, in the height of production they could get up to 7,200 bottles an hour could be, could be dealt with by the plant. So two acre site, uh, around about 120 people working, uh, working at the plant. Now they were quite, quite clued up on, on advertising, uh, we've got a couple of examples of, of advertisements here um, first one is ward and sons uh, high class mineral waters bottlers of bass ales and guinness stout uh, right the way here on market street swinton and as i said uh, they were established in 1874 if you want to send them a telegram you'd say lemonade of swinton uh, so quite uh, quite 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 a, a apt um, um address for them because uh, they, they had a good fleet of uh, lorries to, uh, in, in later years, or obviously after, after the carts, uh, and, and the lorries would deliver to a big wide area all the way across South Yorkshire, Nottinghamshire, Derbyshire, taking out uh, beers, mineral waters, not only to the licensed trade, but also to, uh, to, private, to private houses. I've just got a picture, a couple of pictures of the inside of the plant. This photograph dates, uh, it dates from 1926 actually, you can see a mixed workforce of male and females there uh, and, and this is to celebrate the Miller Hydro Soaker and it's described as a remarkable machine installed in the works of Ward and Son Swinton for washing bottles. So right the way in 1923 they were promoting the, the technology that they had on, on site. This second photograph now is, is, a, is a later model and you can see it's, uh, it's much more sophisticated. Uh, um, the, 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 the dress of the people shows uh, at a later time. And you can see all the rows of bottles, they're trundling along, uh, really being, being filled and then they would be labelled uh, 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 as well. I'm just going to mention, uh, I, I did mention the, um, the, uh, the 120 employees at its height. Um, and the photograph here shows actually um, the presence of the works on, on Market Street. So this property here was number three Market Street. And then if you can make out the lettering here, written in the brickwork, uh, is further advertising. Ward and Sons, Lager, Beer, established 1874, Mineral Water Works. 
and again they've got they've got the bass now this is this was probably t this was probably taken around about the 1920s and, and this is a works outing uh, and at the rear of the property is, is number three uh, Market Street which was actually a company house now that's a very interesting story which will just go off at a, a little tangent here uh, because of the, on the census return of 1900 we have living uh, and it says Market Street I'll read this out because the, the writing is not as easy Market Street Ward and Sons Mineral Waterworks and we have a, a, a Susanna Ward she's the head of a household she's the widow and she's down as a mineral water manufacturer so Susanna Ward and then her son James Ward uh, they're both listed as the employers and then the rest the rest of the family uh, we have a Thomas Vickers and an Edwin Jackson now later on we can actually identify that um, the 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 company house on Market Street moving now to 1911 uh, which just confirms the Jackson family now in residence at that property and we have a Thomas Norman Jackson now Thomas Norman Jackson uh, was the Swinton VC recipient in World War One when it's his first job uh, he did work for wards but then he moved and got another job working as an engine cleaner at the great central Mexper depot on the on the the, the railways uh, but his his father's here is listed uh, and he's listed as a mineral water drayman so living in the company house was uh, thomas norman jackson's father uh, who was a, a drayman now we look at a few artifacts here because as i mentioned the the company were very very clever at marketing and advertising here we've got another um another advert which which again the celebrated bo bottled by warden sons this is the bass pale ale um, and it supplies private families with mild and bitter ales and stout from all the leading brewers so they would supply the beers uh, as well as bottling them bass ales and guineas stouts and all sorts of lager in bottles uh, try our special dinner ales it said part of promotion as well they'd give these out to the to the uh, to the licensed trade uh, we have a, a, a bottle opener and it, there you see Ward and Sons and at the other side you have Swinton so they give these out to the licensed trade uh, pubs and clubs uh, off licenses to uh, to open up the bottles uh, just a few more artifacts which really tell us the story um, I hope you can make out the lettering on this. We have Ward and Sons, the trademark, there's, there's the trademark, and there it says Swinton. And it's if you want a whiskey and soda, you can get the, the wards would supply this in their own bottles. They'd take it away, refill it, uh, very environmentally friendly actually. So they'd come and, uh, and, and, and top it up. So you'd have that on the bar of the pub or the club, or maybe even a private house if you like to tipple of whiskey and soda. And uh, there, 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 there you have an artifact from the uh, from the factory as, as well. Now, a further in interesting little artifact here, and uh, this is a, a press. It's in it's in reverse. WS uh, Products uh, Wards of Swinton, and this is a press which would uh, be be making the the labels on the bottles, uh, and uh, uh, again an art an artifact from the from from the factory. This, this book is actually probably the, will, will be the only one in existence and it's the, it's the, it's the, way, the share issue uh, for, the, for the company. And the, the very first share certificates, you can see it's a hand-bound uh, hand book. The very first share certificates were issued uh, to members of the family. Here we have Sidney Colin Ward. He lived at Highcliffe in Swinton uh, and the, the, the share issue, he got 8,000 8, shares and it's the 17th of July 1936. As we go over the other share issues, the, certif the certificates, again, another 8,000 um, shares was to Frederick William Ward, and he lived over at Houghton Roberts. We have a Gertrude Ward. Uh, she was the wife of, um, of um, Colin. Her share certificate there. And other members of the family, uh, likewise, were, were, were taking shares. The, the very last share issue, actually, uh, in, in this book at least, uh, we, we turn it over, was issued in, in 1959 to a, uh, a gentleman in, in Sheffield. So a really going, a going concern, uh, a company with, with its own share, share issues, 
It ceased production maybe the early 80s and uh, bottling was moved to Sheffield, it's probably not even in Sheffield now. One artifact I do particularly like, uh, and I mentioned the fact that uh, Thomas Norman Jackson's father was a drayman, and here we have um, a crate, uh, a well-made wooden crate uh, with, with wire bindings, very, very strong, and, and this would have been used to take out the bottles um, uh, to pubs, to clubs, uh, and then they would recover the, the empties later. And of course, there was always a deposit on the bottles. And I, I do particularly like, there was even a deposit on the crate itself. And the deposit was three shillings. Uh, but I doubt very much if I'd get my um, 15p back today. Um, but, uh, but, uh, they, the, but I do like this crate and it, does a, it is a, a real sort of artifact. And who knows, uh, this may have even been handled by uh, the father of Thomas Norman Jackson Swinton's uh, Victoria Cross hero. So that's the story of uh, Warden Sons, uh, or a, a condensed story of Warden Sons. I'm sure there's much more to tell, and many people would remember working at the factory, uh, and uh, will have their old memories and probably be able to tell you far more than I can. Thank you very much.